Hi guys and welcome to a new video. So today we're going to talk about my electric scooter project. First up I want to start off by saying that I had exams in the past and I worked a lot of this on this project um, but not too much has happened yet but uh, I think we're going to like get the project rolling and finished within like the next two or three weeks maybe a month I don't know currently but I'm working on it as hard as possible right now and dedicating my full time to it and I'm going to show you guys my progress on this project so the first thing I should maybe mention is I've got a new camera so in the past I've used my oh let me see. so this has been my main shooter for like the last I don't know five years or so it still kind of works like most of the components work uh, the autofocus is just a little bit messed up uh, so I got myself a new camera for YouTube mainly I think there will be some parts in this video that are shot on uh, on this camera um, and let's see maybe you can guys figure out which parts uh, were shot on this one and you guys can maybe tell me in the comments uh, if the video quality improved and if you saw a difference <laughs> let's talk about the e-scooter project right so the first thing I did since the last video was basically uh, swap out the temperature sensor um, I talked about this in the last video basically the temperature sensor was connected to 12 volts instead of ground and so I swapped that out I basically opened up the motor uh, solder out the connection and connected uh, the temperature sensor to ground instead of 12 volts and tested it and voila we had a temperature signal from the motor which is great you know this allows way more power because now we can drive way more amps into the motor and basically expect the motor to overheat eventually but we will know when it overheats instead of you know using way lower power but never really knowing how much power the motor could actually handle so having a temperature sensor basically unlocks more power because now you can be safe while you apply a lot of power to the motor yes Woo! Skid. the next thing i did was basically uh, improve the electric brake since this e-scooter mainly relies on the electric brake and there was only a basically read switch so a on and off switch inside the brake lever for detecting if the brake is pulled and um, because i want to you know apply the brake continuously like i want to have an adjustable brake a, a analog brake basically not a digital brake so instead of instead of the br electric brake just slamming on i want to you know gradually increase the strength as much as i want so what i did was basically i pulled out the old read switch and put in a new hall effect sensor and yeah it worked great the magnet was already in the brake so i i didn't have to do that much work it was basically just ripping the old sensor out and putting a new sensor in there and now i have a great analog signal uh, for braking basically this basically feeds directly into my next point so uh, how are we going to read the analog signal and also the analog signal for the throttle and control the motor controller with it um, as a motor controller we use the VASC and to control the VASC you could in theory directly apply a analog voltage signal to the VASC and that would work great for like throttle so you can power the e-scooter right the VASC only has one single analog input signal basically and you can't put two analog signals into it i want to have throttle and i want to have brake and that's not possible with the vesk the vesk only allows one single analog signal so what you need to do is basically you basically need to convert the the throttle signal and the brake signal into something the vesk understands and um, what i will use for that is a so-called esp32 uh, these are some great Arduino microcontrollers basically you could in theory run them without Arduino but uh, they work great together with other Arduino stuff and that's what I use them for but why did I choose a ESP32 and not like the usual Arduino Nano or whatever first up this thing is way way faster than any normal Arduino you can get this thing runs on a maximum frequency of around 240 megahertz 
and I think the normal Arduino only runs on like 16 megahertz or something so this thing is way faster and gets also way more work done per cycle as far as I know. Also a ne next big feature this thing has integrated Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. We're not going to use the Wi-Fi for this but we are going to use the Bluetooth and I'll come to that later. What I also did was I basically welded some battery packs. So I finished up the 18650 Samsung 35E cell battery pack. Um, these little small battery packs each have 226 watt hours of energy, basically combined somewhere around 450 watt hours, which is insane. Like that's a lot of energy. You can ride a lot of distance with that amount of energy. I basically welded them all together. I put on some balancing connectors to the outside and now you can easily charge them with the normal typical LiPo balancing charger. And that already works great. So I'm really happy with the current results. Uh, furthermore, I also started working on the uh, recycled battery cells. Um, as you may know, I, I had some old recycled cells laying around that I will also use for this project and also welded two more batteries. Since the batteries on this e-scooter are swappable, meaning you can just pull them out uh, in the middle of a ride basically and put in some new ones and put them in your backpack or something. So I will also build some battery packs out of these recycled cells. They're all, they're like 50% finished right now. So, uh, so I can carry some spare batteries around with me if I ever needed them. And that leads me to my last point. I wanted to have a little OLED in the front of the scooter. Let me show you. So my initial idea was to use like one of these OLEDs and the Arduino Nano to basically have a small monitor on the front of the e-scooter where it shows me the speed, the power, distance, you know, range, things like that. I, I tinkered around with like um, these, uh, these shielded cables and things like that and sent the SPI signals through that. I also tried I2C but that's even worse. But what I quickly realized it's basically impossible to send the signal from all the way from the back of the scooter all the way to the front uh, to like the dash of the scooter. The signals that uh, you know get received at the other end they don't look like this anymore like bits but instead they look like this. So, so even though the Arduino basically puts in you know all the bits correctly on this side which basically, you know, get transmitted as like perfect rectangles. When they go off through all this wire, they come out on the other end as like these very crooked waves and the display can't read these crooked waves anymore. <laughs> There's really no option in fixing that. The cable is just too long. Here, com here comes the great idea I had. So instead of using this, this stupid OLED, which basically doesn't work really, I instead decided on building a Android app. I wanted to do this for a while now and I kind of saw this as like the perfect chance right now. Uh, so what I did was basically I fired up Android Studio and I learned a lot of Android Studio. I started basically from nowhere. I, I just built a quick app where I could click stuff. Then I built an app that could communicate over Bluetooth and then I tried to combine everything and it was super hard. and. It took quite a while so I, I worked on this app for like I don't know the last three four weeks or something like that. Um, I now have it working finally. Uh, I tried some frameworks before that like Ionic framework and uh, React Native. Like what I need is to build a native Android app uh, because that's just way simpler that makes it way easier to actually get stuff done and that's what I wanted to do. Yeah let me show you the app. So, so I think the Funniest part of building an app like this is actually uh, what, I, what I initially thought was going to be super hard like I don't know Bluetooth communication making like a list or something uh, things like that are actually quite easy but what is way 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 more difficult is like the small nuances that you need to figure out uh, to get everything working. For example it took me like an insane amount of time to get this first Bluetooth list in the right font size. Meanwhile Bluetooth communication was super easy. There's like a quick YouTube tutorial from like a Russian guy or something and he explains you how to do the Bluetooth communication in like 10 minutes 
and after that you got it you can you can do bluetooth communication so but gladly enough i have a lot of good friends that studied uh, computer science and things like that also like build apps in their free time and and stuff like that so so big thanks to everybody who helped me on the project uh, that was really kind of you so what's going to happen in the next uh, few videos right we're going to see everything like come together i'm going to connect the esp32 to my uh, vesk to the e-scooter so we can see if it actually can drive the e-scooter we're also going to connect the throttle the the brake the batteries and um, we also need to build a anti-spark uh, i'm going to use my own design that i made like a while ago so yeah thank you so much for watching see you in the next one ciao